Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Let's talk about how to get honest and genuine feedback about your business idea from family, friends, and potential customers. This is step number two of three based on a recent video I published on how to test a business idea. So if you've not yet watched that or you've not yet watched the video focused on step number one, I recommend that you check those out. You can find links up in the information box up in the top right corner of the video player here or down in the video description box below. And of course, if you're interested in learning even more about how to build and grow your business, then I recommend that you subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and that you turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on future videos. But let's get into it. The focus here in step number two is getting early reactions to our business idea so that we can improve not only the idea itself, but also the way that we communicate the idea. In step number one, we built a simple marketing website to bring your business idea to life, to make it tangible and to convey it in a way as if the business or the product or the service already exists. So it's a marketing website that shows people exactly what it is that you intend to offer as if it's already real and is already available. Here in step number two, we're gathering important reactions from early family, friends, and potential customers that you have a close relationship with in order to improve our messaging because the odds are that no matter how much time and energy you spent putting together the very first version of your website, it's very difficult to communicate a new idea to people in a way that is succinct and easy for them to understand. So here we're trying to actually make sure that when people look at the website, they get it, they understand what it is, who it's for, and why someone might be interested in buying it, or if it's a service, why someone might be interested in joining. And so that's what we're trying to accomplish here. And as I'm sure you can imagine, when you're trying to get feedback from family, from friends, even potential customers where you have a close relationship with them, the one challenge, of course, is getting honest and genuine feedback and genuine reactions because if they have a relationship with you, they're going to default to being encouraging, supportive. They're not going to want to be critical. They're not going to want to either put the relationship at risk or come across overly critical, they're gonna wanna make you feel good and make it feel like you have a, a good idea and that you're moving in the right direction. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on five different tips, things that you wanna focus on in order to make sure that you're getting genuine and honest and helpful feedback from them that you can actually use to not only improve the product or service idea, but to improve the way that you're communicating it to people, which is the whole idea here. So these tips are all about making sure that you get helpful and useful information instead of just blind encouragement. Before I actually dive into the five tips, number one, I just wanted to point out, these tips are heavily inspired by Sprint by Jake Knapp and John Zaransky. This is a fantastic book. If you're interested in this sort of thing, in everything from prototyping your product idea to getting early feedback and making sure that you're moving in the right direction, I strongly recommend this book if you're interested in a more systematic approach to everything that we're talking about here. So definitely check that out. And also before I jump into the tips, I just wanna establish some context. So these will be one-on-one -on -one casual informal interviews that you're doing. So you won't be sitting down with a big group of family and friends. You'll be sitting down one-on-one -on -one with a single family member or a friend, or like I mentioned earlier, a potential customer that you might have a close relationship with. And so that's the context here. It's one-on-one, -on -one, it's, just you and them, and you've got a laptop, you've got a tablet with your website pulled up so that you can show them and get their genuine reaction. That's the context here. Tip number one, take the pressure off of them. This is the first and most important step right out of the gate. You want them to understand you're testing the idea, you're testing the website, you're not testing them. This is important because when you're sitting down, even in a casual, informal situation, when it's clear that you've pulled them aside to get their opinion, to get their feedback, people often are gonna feel like you're testing them, that their reaction matters and that you're judging them, how quickly do they understand the idea, that sort of thing. So you wanna make sure that they understand right out of the gate, you're testing the idea, not testing them. And one way to do this is just to simply start by asking permission and say, hey, I'd like to get your thoughts, your feedback, your reaction to this thing that I'm putting together and I wanna understand how you see it without having any formal knowledge about it. So I wanna know what you think of this idea. We're testing the idea. So that's how you wanna lay the groundwork here and make it clear to them there are no wrong answers. There's no way to fail at giving you this feedback. You just simply wanna see what they think of the idea based on their first impressions. So that's setting the context and making sure that you're taking the pressure off of them immediately. Tip number two, ask open-ended questions. This is how you'll actually conduct this casual interview. You wanna ask open questions like, what do you think of this? What do you think it does? Who do you think it's for? 
What, if anything, on the page stands out to you? Focus on questions that allow them freedom to answer however they wanna answer. So what you don't wanna do is ask leading questions that are designed to either give them information that they wouldn't necessarily get from the website alone or that are designed to guide them to focus on something specifically. You don't wanna do that because at the end of the day, this website ultimately needs to stand on its own. You're not always gonna be there to look over potential customers' shoulders. And so if you need to ask questions that are actually designed to give them more information or to get them to focus on certain things, then the website is not standing on its own and you're not getting their genuine reaction, you're actually giving them information when the whole goal of this process is to get information from them, to see how they're reacting and to understand why they're having certain reactions. And the reason why this is so important is because no matter how much time and energy you spent building this simple marketing website to bring your idea to life, odds are that people, at least some portion of people, are gonna be confused, they're gonna not understand what's going on, they're not gonna understand what the product is, who it's for, or why someone might be interested in it, especially if what you've created is something new, different, or innovative, where they're not immediately familiar with the product or service category. Now, you may be coming to market with something that is very similar to something that already exists, in which case they might get it a lot quicker, but even then, sometimes the language we use and the imagery that we use can be confusing. So. The idea here is you wanna really understand how they're seeing the website, how they're reacting to it, what they think the product is or the service is, because if it's not correct, you need to understand why. So you don't want to discourage or, or have them feel like being confused is a bad thing. You wanna just simply understand what they're experiencing and why they're experiencing that. So just continue to ask follow-up questions. Now, of course, they may ask you questions. They might turn to you and say, well, what is this? And without kind of deflecting it right back to them by answering a question with a question, you just wanna gently guide them back and say, I'm interested in what you think it is. I wanna know how you are experiencing the website. And so you can simply direct it back to them and just make it clear that it's not important that they get the answer right, it's that they give their answer in terms of how they're experiencing it. So you can just direct it back and say, what do you think it's for? Who do you think it's for? What do you find interesting on the website? That sort of thing. Okay. Tip number three, avoid stepping into help. This should go without saying, but I wanna clarify this here. You shouldn't be looking over their shoulder. You shouldn't be pointing you know, where they should be focusing their energy. You shouldn't be trying to sell them on the idea or fill in any gaps that are missing from the website. You're not there to promote the idea. You're there to see how they react to the idea. So avoid stepping into help. Now, one thing I wanna note here is if it's very clear they're completely confused and you've already gathered some very useful information based on why they're confused or, or why the website might not be communicating the idea, of course, at that point, it's okay to step in and answer some questions and get their opinions as you clarify the idea. But the end goal here is to have people interacting with the website where they're not asking you questions, you're not having to fill in information, you're not having to step in or stand over their shoulder and and show them where to focus or explain anything. So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna step in, it should be with a thought that the website has already failed to explain the idea effectively. And that's perfectly okay. Failure in the sense is okay because it's something that you can improve and iterate upon to be more clear for the next visitor. But avoid stepping in to help. Tip number four, this is a big one. And it's an interesting one because there's some challenges here. Record their reactions. If at all possible, I recommend that you set up a video camera. You can use something simple like this, which is just a basic tripod, a little clamp that allows you to mount a smartphone to any traditional tripod. So it's a $20 clamp. Any smartphone, any modern smartphone has ability to capture video and to capture audio. And then, like I said, you can use any tripod. You don't need anything fancy. But the idea here is you wanna capture not only the screen and how they're interacting with the website, but you wanna capture them, their reactions, and of course the audio as well. And if you can get yourself in the frame too, that's great because then you can see how the entire interview process went. But one thing to keep in mind here is some people are not particularly comfortable being recorded especially if they already have the sense that they're the ones being tested and that their reactions matter. And if they don't answer your questions fast enough, then it's gonna reflect poorly on them. Some people are just simply not comfortable in front of a camera. And so it's important to appreciate that. So what I would recommend is that you test this on maybe the first couple of interviews. And if it's very clearly having a negative impact on the flow of the entire process, then you might consider pulling back from that approach. And what you can do instead is you can use screen recording software. 
This isn't as good because you can't capture their facial reactions and the entire experience, but you can capture audio, you can capture what they're saying, you can capture your questions and how they're responding, which is really important. And of course, you're recording the screen. So you can find software like ScreenFlow for the Mac, Camtasia, I believe, is a popular solution for PCs. If you're using an iPad or an iPhone, I believe they have built-in screen recording capabilities, and I'm pretty sure it captures audio as well. But very important that you capture the audio because that's most of the interaction that you're gonna be having with them. And of course, if you're not able to capture their facial reactions, then you're really relying on your open-ended questions and your ability to pull information from them. Because ideally, you want them almost narrating their entire experience like almost like a David Attenborough uh, nature film where they're just describing, here's what I'm looking at, here's what I think of that. Of course, they're not gonna naturally do this, so you need to pull this information out of them by asking thoughtful, open-ended questions to understand what they're experiencing and why they might be drawing certain conclusions or getting confused when it comes to certain things. But the general idea here behind tip number four is find ways to record their reactions because of course, in the moment when they're going through things and you're focused on asking great questions and understanding how they're interacting, you're not gonna be taking detailed notes or at least it's gonna be very difficult to be capturing detailed notes. And you wanna be able to review the experience later to really dive into how they were answering certain questions and what they were experiencing so that you can understand maybe where the messaging went wrong or where there are possible situations that might be creating confusion for people that are looking at the website. So very important to record the process. Tip number five, and this is just to understand the purpose of this whole process, aim for total clarity. That's when you know that your website is performing as it should. When most people that look at the website and you start to ask open-ended questions, that they get it, they understand what it is, who it's for, and generally speaking, why someone might be interested in it. They might not know all the details, all the nuances, but the average person that you sit down and talk with should immediately get it. They should understand basically what it is that you're trying to offer and why someone might be interested in it. So that is what we're trying to achieve. And so through this whole process, it's totally fine if people are confused, as long as you take note of that and look for ways to reduce confusion and to ensure people are getting it. And one thing to really keep in mind, and we talked about this in the last video, the headline on your website is arguably the single most effective area that you can focus on to improve clarity. 80 to 90% of your time and attention should be focused on getting that headline and any optional subheadline right, so that when people read that, and it may in fact be the only thing on the entire page that they read, you wanna make sure that bit of text communicates your idea effectively. And of course, the related imagery is just as important because it really brings the headline to life and it's, it is an opportunity to actually add confusion. If the imagery looks completely different than what the headline is saying, it might lead people to come to some mistaken conclusion as to what it is that you're offering. So those two things work closely together. Maybe it's better to say together, you wanna spend 80 to 90% of your time on those two elements, the headline and the relevant imagery that you're using above the fold when people first land on the website. In the next video, we're gonna take the step further and actually start testing your website with real customers. So obviously by that point, the website really needs to stand on its own. You're not gonna be there in person to answer questions or to provide any clarity. So even if you get away with a little bit of that in these casual interviews, once you start testing with real customers, you won't have that luxury at all. And what we're gonna be focused in that video on is everything from how to attract initial customers. We're gonna use Facebook ads and Google ads as a simple way that you can attract people to the website. And then in that video, we'll talk about the kinds of things that you wanna focus on, tracking people visiting the website, how much time they spend on the website, how many people click your call to action button, and that sort of thing, and how you can actually draw some conclusions from that, and how to actually be effective in attracting people to the website. So that's what we'll focus on in the next video, but that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button down below. It lets me know what kind of content you enjoy, and it also helps promote this video out to more people here on the YouTube platform, which helps grow our audience. And of course, if you're interested in learning more about how to build and grow your business, then I recommend that you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on future videos. And of course, if you have any questions at all about this process, either this step or any of the other steps, let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.